All right, today we're gonna to talk about BL Heli M. Haven't heard of BL Heli M before, but you've probably heard of its predecessor. But today we're gonna to show where you can find it, download it, and flash it. So if you're not aware, this month is Hacktoberfest. Hacktoberfest is recognition of everybody that contributes to an open source project. Uh, Betaflight's definitely participating in it, and I'm sure other open source projects are participating as well. So check it out. You have to register. Essentially, if you make a pull request, which is basically asking the project to pull in some coding you did on it, could be something small, something big, whatever, and that project's participating, then you're eligible for a free t-shirt. There you go. So, oh yeah, look at that. The image lined up pretty good with the shirt in my head, although I won't be making any PRs. To do my part, though, in the celebration of Hacktoberfest, I'm gonna go ahead and review the different open source projects that we use in this hobby, and there's a number of them, and today we're starting with BL Heli M. So BL Heli M is a continuation of the Jazz Maverick project, which you may have heard about already, hence the M after BL Heli. So get it, M, Maverick, BL Heli, Maverick, okay. I'll drop this link below. This is on the RC groups where a lot of the development conversations are going on. This is the intro post so you can get, you know, kind of the latest brief stuff. Uh, it seems like Jazz is keeping this up to date as newest things are put onto the page. However, if you want to follow along the conversation, uh, really the latest parts of the conversation, then you would hit the last button here that will take you all the way to the end. You can see, I'm sure there's threads every couple days, if, if not every day. Obviously, this links them back to a GitHub where he's keeping the code stored. But the easiest way, if you want to just download and install it on your ESCs, is to get the configurator that Asm, another open source developer, has forked the BL Heli configurator that's been out there that was originally developed by, I think it was Diehertz, if I recall correctly, developed the configurator. It started as a Chrome app to be as an alternative to the BL Heli configurator uh, that was with BL Heli S. Long story short, you can click on this link here and also just drop the direct link to this below. That will take you to the configurator page. Then you can see right here, we can download it. I'm gonna go down here, pick your pleasure, which one you want. For most Windows machines, it would be the Win64 nowadays. So click that. Go ahead and hit save or just open. I already have it saved and open and installed. So all you need to do is unzip it to a directory on your computer, which I put all the stuff under here for me. And right here I have it. So you'd have a, you just unzip that file, there's a folder in there, you just drag it to any location on your computer, on your desktop, wherever you want it to. And from here you go ahead and click the executable. That will open up the program here. From here I'm gonna have my little whoop here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in just to show how it works. And I'm gonna hit the connect button. Now with whoops, it powers the ESC you know, just by the five volt from the USB plug. So we'll just go ahead and hit read setup there after I connect. And I'll have my firmware here. Now most of the firmware you would have would say like 16, 7, 16 something. 16.9 is the latest of BL Heli M. Uh, you can note your ESC type here. So from here, it's as simple if you want to flash it to the 16.9, the BL Heli M or whatever, maybe it goes up to 17 or whatever you want. This is going to pull from the, J the BL Heli M project. You go ahead and hit flash all, and then you make sure that this version here that shows for your ESC was the same that it showed here. So you just kind of visually confirm that. And then here you can select a different bunch of different options. You actually have the official BL Heli S here, the 16.7, if you do ever want to flash back. You have the, there was a kind of a beta release of BL Heli M uh, 16.7.1 that was working pretty well. And then they made a number of iterations and updates. Now they're up to 16.9. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit 16.9, go ahead and hit flash, and it will flash through all the ESCs on there. When you're doing this, you're gonna really make sure don't mess around with your USB connection. You don't wanna lose power. So the best thing is if everything's you know, connected and your USB's connected good, just don't touch it <laughs> you know, as it's flashing. Don't move it around on the desk or anything that the ESC could lose power because then if it's in the middle of flashing, it could, it could be a bad day for you. Okay, so once it's done flashing everything, you can see I have it here and we can go ahead and hit read setup. Now the settings I had on here, it's gonna keep the same settings. So I had this set to 96 kilohertz. If you saw, I already had it flash to BL Helium, so I just kind of reflashed it just to 
show what it would go through in the process. What's really nice about BLLAM is these different options here. You got the 24, 48, 96 kilohertz and just a selection. So you don't just flash different ones, you can just change the selection. So on this Whoop, when I did my review, I went up to 96 kilohertz. I didn't really notice any battery savings. Actually, I did notice some when I put it on Betaflight 4.2.3. So it was about 20 to 30 seconds. I wanna now try it on 48 kilohertz mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit select and set on that. And I'm gonna write setup and that will change it to be 48 kilohertz. You'll see right up here, I'll say reading settings and then writing and then finished. These are some other options here as well. What I would say for BL Heli M is it's more like beta flight first clean flight. You know, BL Heli S is pretty stagnant. I'm not saying clean flight was stagnant back in the day, but beta flight was the new cool, hey, we're trying different things. We're gonna, you know, we're just more development driven. Uh, just trying new ideas. Not every idea is, you know, a winner, but it's this area and this project that basically, you know, it's a safe zone, try new things. So Jazz initially started this through development of 16.9, this commutation enhancement was proposed. And what this did is kind of pre-charge the coil. So you have the coil on the inside of the motor and the magnets on the outside. It kind of pre-charged that before it gave it its full charge just to um, ward off some of the limitations of inductance and things of that nature. I didn't get into it too much. You have to, you can read more about it in that initial RC groups link. And since then he's kind of moved on to this async PWM mode. So that is what is the recommendation as of today. I'm sure it might change. Like I said, this is going through development. Very similar to Betaflight. You know, a Betaflight is a project where, you know, initial development, new ideas are tried out and then over time see how they go and then maybe they're dropped, maybe they're kept, maybe they're mod modified somewhere in between, but it's always trying to push that envelope a little bit more and more and more. Same thing with ESC feed forward, uh, acceleration of braking. So again, you can read in that RC Groups link. I'll drop that down below and maybe I'll do a follow up video. I need to study up on a little bit myself. But as for now, just getting into it started, the recommendation is async PWM right here leave feed, ESC feed forward off for now, and then you can simply just choose your PWM refresh rate that you want there. Obviously on lower crafts, it's well known that, you know, from whoops up to like a three inch, if you go from 24 to 48 kilohertz, you'll save battery lights usually, you know, sometimes 30 seconds to a minute, which is pretty long when you're, you know, only dealing with four minute flight times. So it saves about 30%, um, power depends on your situation. And then for larger crafts, folks sometimes like for five inch, six inch, Folks sometimes find more success with 24 kilohertz. Some others find it more successful with 48 kilohertz. There's differences between the two. Uh, if you're on the BL LES, you have 16 bit ESCs yet. Here you can just select them just like you could with BL Heli 32. So that was, you know, the, the big advancement with JESC and then now also BL Heli M. You might hear some people talk about how you know, Jazz Maverick has some bugs and blah, blah, blah. And there might have been a time, honestly, for the longest time I was using JESC, just kind of in support of Joe. But uh, with BLLAM out there and it's kind of matured a bunch, I uh, did some testing. I don't see any issues in 16.9. In fact, if you're interested in looking at the details on that, that will be this week's Patreon only video. We're gonna look at the differences between 24 kilohertz PWM with BLLAM. M firmware 48 kilohertz because the word on the street was that 24 was fine for the bi-directional data going back to beta flight but 48 it was kind of buggy and that might have been true but I tested both and uh, again you can see the results in that if you're interested if you're not a patron consider signing up it's only five bucks a month for the additional access videos otherwise go ahead and check out BLLEM as always, big thanks to the devs that you know make this open source firmware possible. You know, I know it's exploring this kind of stuff as part of the hobby for them, but it's also a great part for us. So much of the RC quadcopter hobby was really formed and made possible even today yet uh, through the efforts of all of the open source devs. So do consider, I'll drop the links below if there's any, I gotta look around here for a contribution to these guys. In the upcoming videos, we're gonna take a closer look at Express LRS, which has provided an open source alternative to the R9 firmware since we kind of got left in the dust by FR Sky when they switched to Access, including this guy. I'm gonna explore switching all my R9 stuff over to Express LRS to breathe life into it since SR Sky is no longer supporting the ACCST versions of it. And also, they have a 2.4 gigahertz module similar to the Ghost out there. 
So, so we'll take a look at that. Until then, thanks everybody, and I hope this helped. <laughs>